Hi, Brittany. Yes, I in fact do know that there have been uh, protests and campaigns for men's rights, and they've almost always been opposed by feminists. Case in point would be the University of Toronto when CAFE had their thing there and the feminists pulled the fire alarm, or when feminists uh, bomb threaded the men's rights uh, thing in Detroit. Links in the down below. Feminism is a women's movement. Brittany, this is why I follow you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so sick of the lie that feminism is about equality. That's the answer to your question, Brittany, because almost every conversation I have with a feminist on Twitter or online or in real life at all I get told feminism is the political movement to make equality between men and women. Right? They, they go right to the dictionary definition in spite of the fact that feminism is a movement and where that movement goes defines what it is. Right? So, thank you. Seriously, I am so sick of this dishonest bullshit that feminism is somehow about equality. But that's... The, that's the basis of why I said what I said, right? Why, why I asked those questions in the first place. Because I keep hearing feminists claim that feminist only you gotta be shitting me. So let's address your question. You said if men traditionally had power, and if the issue is women don't have power, okay. There's never been a time in human history where women didn't have power. There's never been a time in human history where only men had power. Now, I don't know if you mean a, spe a, a specific kind of power. I think what you mean is male leadership and not power, but I don't actually know because power is kind of um, vague terminology. It's very, very vague, and I think it's left vague for a reason. I don't think you were intentionally being vague, but this kind of mentality has been kept vague for a very good reason. Um, and that reason is, for the same reason creationists say, well, show that one kind of animal can turn into another kind. Well, what do you mean by kind? Well, I mean kind. Well, do you mean species? Do you mean this? Do you mean that? Do you mean kingdom? Like, what do you mean kind? Like, they keep the word kind vague because that's their gotcha, right? And this kind of thing is the same kind of thing. Now, just because someone is in a leadership position doesn't mean they have all the power. As a matter of fact, I believe you do a lot of dominatrix uh, like, uh, well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I should say, I believe you do a lot of um, s &M kind of stuff. And in some of the videos I see you talking about that, you, you, you broach the subject. I'm not really into that because that's not really what I'm into, right? But you talked several times about how, you know, it's the one who's, who's submissive, who really has the control at times. And the person who's being dominating, or the, the doing the dominating, is really like, like you control the person through being submissive. Like you talk a lot of, of psychology and and sexual desire and, and those kind of things. So I think you already understand how you can be from a weak position and still control a person. Right? I hope I didn't botch that too much. Uh, I think you know where I'm. I'm kind of going with there. Uh, an example in history would be the white flower slash white feather campaign that feminists had for a while, right? And if feminists never had any power, or if women never had any power, then how did feminists get prohibition passed? Th there's things like that, right? So if there was no power th that women had, how did women use political power? If you don't have it, how can you use it? The fact is, women have always had power. Men have always had power. Everyone has power. Right? It's whether you use it or whether you utilize it well. What power you have. 
right? Women's power has always been the ability to shame men, right? And I've seen it my whole fucking life. My sexuality has always been shamed by women, even by my mothers, okay? Even by my mothers. Even the, the, the mother that I, I, I love the most, and it's always been, it's always been there for me when she could be, right? More or less. Um, even she said, oh, you're just saying that because you're a guy, right? Because somehow it's wrong for men to want sex or to say that sex is healthy for men and women. But apparently, I'm only saying that because I'm a guy, right? To get shut down for no other reason than I have testicles. What the fuck? And when I was in college, a girl actually asked me, um, why are men so violent? And we're just sitting there, and we're both studying nursing, and she asked me, why are men so violent? And my response was, probably for the same reason women are. I have seen women be more violent than I have men. Yeah. For real. They just use violence more often in different ways than men do. Men is more direct. And I've seen women be very, very direct. Well, I should say females. I've seen females be very, very direct with violence, right? Uh, two sisters sharing a room, always fucking violent with one another. And both have been violent against me. And when I strike back, what did our mother say? Never hit a girl. Now, I'm a year and a half and two and a half years younger than two girls beating up on me, but I'm the one who's not supposed to hit back? Because she worry, was worried that I was going to turn into the monster her husband was, the violent piece of shit her husband at the time was. That turned out to be her daughters! <laughs> it was her daughters who turned out to be the piece of shit her horrible husband was. So, uh, you know, there you, go, there, there you are for irony and, and justice, right? Because um, it, was, it was her daughter who, who got all of us kicked out of a daycare because she chased a boy down with a knife because uh, she was mad at something he had said. But only men are violent. So let's go on to your... Uh, toxic masculinity that you brought up in that short little video clip. And this short little video clip, it, well, okay, it stopped being short a while ago, but uh, toxic masculinity, as, as, as all I've seen, it boils down to any masculine behavior person X doesn't like. That's what it boils down to out of all the conversations I've seen Right, and you, you've in no way uh, defined toxic masculinity. I've seen the word thrown around a lot. I've seen different definitions for it, different examples for it. Um, but you did give an example. So I decided to go to Geek Feminism Wikipedia. Toxic masculinity is one of the ways in which patriarchy, mythological creature created by feminism, is harmful to men. It refers to the social construct attitudes that describe the masculine gender role as violent, unemotional, sexually aggressive, and so forth. A well-known masculinity slash men's right movement that is not mostly anti-feminist has yet to appear for a silencing tactic used to discredit patriarchy's harm to people who are not men. See, patriarchy hurts men too. Okay, so, uh, I don't think they understand what patriarchy is. Um, but let's look at this. A well-known masculinity men's rights... Mo okay, so uh, right here we can see that uh, feminism is against men's rights. Or at least men's rights, the right men's rights movement. Um, a well-known masculinity slash men's rights movement that is not mostly anti-feminism has yet to appear. I think that would be because feminism is harmful to men, because their teachings and their beliefs are harmful to men. Uh, examples. The pervasive idea of male-female 
interactions are competitive, not cooperative. Okay, first of all, there's nothing wrong with competition. Um, and competition and cooperation can both be useful. It depends on your attitude towards the competition. Um, though I think I think adversarial might actually be a better word there. Their pervasive idea that men cannot truly understand women and vice versa. Okay, again, that's true because while you can try and empathize with a person until you've actually walked in somebody's shoes, there's only so much that you can learn from the experience, right? From, from the experience of talking to someone, right? Versus actually going through something. I can tell you what it's like to go through the army all day long, but if I've never been in the army, there's only so much I can actually tell you before I'm just making shit up. Um, I can tell you what it's like to be homeless from my experience as being homeless, but other people being homeless will have different experiences. But either way, unless you know what it's like to pass out because you haven't had enough food, or when you have zero idea of where you're, you might be next week, right? You don't, you can imagine all you want, but until you've actually been through that, you can never fully understand the full implications of being in that situation, which I have been. Um, related to the idea that real men cannot be victims of abuse, or that talking about it is shameful. I don't know any guy who thinks that. At all. But... When I start talking about abuse in a group full of feminists, it's really funny how they keep telling me that violence is something men do. And somehow, by bringing up that I've been sexually assaulted by women, actually, in this case, again, i got to say females, because once it was by a girl, and the other time it was by a woman. So really female. Um first grade, in fact. Somehow, it's still a woman's issue because almost no women sexually assault, except when I actually pull up scientific study by the APA that actually shows that women are just as likely to be rapists and sexual assaulters. But of course, that must be patriarchy, even though psychology is a field that's been dominated by women now. Again, if women didn't have power, they wouldn't have been able to obtain it and dominate fields. Uh, the myth that men are not interested in parenting and are inherently unsuitable to be single parents. Actually, that myth was started by feminists in the 19... Sorry, 19... Oh my God, 100 years off. In the 1850s. This myth that, that women are healers and nurturers and men are violent fighters. It was a myth started in the 1850s by a woman who wanted custody of her children so that her husband would pay her uh, child support. Right? Th this goes all the way back to the 1850s. Uh, emasculation. The idea that there is a range of feminine interests and activities a real man would not hold and that disprove a man's masculinity regardless of his actions. Interest one's personal looks. Again, bullshit. Men have always been interested in their personal looks. Um, dressing up. Fashion, yeah, no. A dude, for example, language that's heavily in masculine conversation is a guy who's very fashionable, in particular about the clothing he wears. Um, being emotional, expressing emotion, crying. Yeah, crying is not very masculine. If your wife dies, however, every guy knows, dude, the love of your life just died, dude. Or like, if a guy just broke up with his girl and he's crying, like, oh, dude, I feel for you, man. Like, every masculine portrayal of a guy crying, right, has been because his wife died, because he lost his girl, right? Things along those lines. The women in his life are gone for one reason or another. There's nothing more masculine than that, than crying over that reason. As a matter of fact, even in Scar... Ah, Scar... Stargate... 
SG-1, there's a scene where an alien is taking care of a male child, and she says, and he says, I'm not, my mom says I'm not supposed to cry because human boys don't cry. And Colonel Neal says, no, when your mother dies, there's an exception to that rule. Right? Like, but boys aren't supposed to cry. Not because it's toxic masculinity, but because it turns women off. Right? If a guy is extremely emotional, women will not see him as a suitable mate. And that's what that comes down to. So this whole toxic masculinity thing, this is just crap made up by feminists. N nothing here is really, is, is, is things that actually happen in real life. But I've seen other lists that said um, being aggressive is toxic masculinity. What the hell is toxic about being aggressive? If you want something in this world, you have to be aggressive. Ego's not a bad thing either. They did an episode of Scrubs on why ego's a very good thing. You have to have a lot of ego to cut into a human being, pull out organs, and put them the fuck back. Fix them, and then put them back. That You have to have a lot of ego for that. You have to have a lot of confidence. And if you want women to be interested in you, you have to have confidence. That's one of the first things Jordan Peterson talks about with, with, with aid to, to, to boys and to being men, is to have confidence. Hell, it's even in South Park when Stan's looking for the clitoris. So this, this whole thing is, is just nonsense. I'm sorry, I don't buy in the toxic masculinity bull. Now, if you want to talk about real toxic masculinity, uh, I have seen these alpha male assholes who are only interested in, like, beating everyone up and threatening, and if you do this, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. You better not. Like, that's, that's pretty toxic masculinity. And in the movie Secondhand Lions, I think this is d addressed very, very well. Um, one of the main characters says, say, says, see, this is what I'm talking about. Boys who are not raised properly, who go around with their friends and cause trouble and think that's how to be a man. I'm paraphrasing, uh, of course, because I'm trying to do this briefly. It's already been like an hour. And he goes, no, and these people are too good-hearted to put a stop to these guys doing this thing. And then he, then this old guy beats the crap out of four teenagers. Right after he gets out of the hospital. <laughs> so, I mean, little spoiler alert, but it's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, fucking watch that movie. I don't care who you are. Everyone should see that movie. Also, uh, paying it forward, same child actor. That's all I have to say about toxic masculinity. But to address your other question of why would feminism ever deal in men's issues? Because women don't operate in a bubble. They don't operate separate from all the society. Right? Society is integrated. And the number one thing I hear from feminists is... Feminism is about equality. It's not just for women. You're the first feminist I've ever heard say that it's a movement for women. Thank you. It's a movement for women, and therefore it can't be a movement for equality. Those two are mutually exclusive. You cannot make something equal and ignore the, opposite, the other side of the equation. It cannot be done. But if feminism isn't the hatred for men and boys, then why is it so opposed to men having the same rights? When I was on Twitter, and uh, this was uh, a couple years ago when Planned Parenthood, was, they lied about them, like uh, throwing fetuses in, in the regular trash and all that other crap, and they were the hashtag PP was, was big, right? Um, I tweeted, I responded to a tweet about 
Planned Parenthood and said men need Planned Parenthood too. And then the very first response was from a feminist who said, I just want to keep a woman barefoot and pregnant. Men also needing Planned Parenthood means I want to keep a woman barefoot and pregnant. First of all, no man wants to keep a woman pregnant. Pregnant women are fucking crazy, and they eat a lot of motherfucking food. So that like, and 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 they demand you get up at two o'clock in the morning to go get whatever the fuck they uh they have a craving for. And I don't have a problem with that. Right, initially, like once or twice, but after, like, no guy wants his wife to be continuously pregnant. Yeah, I want kids, right, a couple, right, but I also want to control when I have those kids. And since we're on that topic now, right, but, but that was the first response. After everything, I got a slew of fucking feminists going how much I hate women. Now, first of all, I don't want to keep a woman pregnant. Any woman pregnant. My girl, my fiance, she said, if we win the lottery, you have to give me 12 kids. I said, honey, after the third one, you're not going to want 12 kids. You're not going to want one of them you already have at that point. Um, by the first one, you're going to be yelling at me in the middle of your pregnancy going, what did you do to me? And crying and like crushing my hand as I hold you in the hospital. And she was, and she was laughing at that because she was getting where I was going with that. But yeah, I, I don't want to keep her... Now, barefoot, yes, I do want to keep my wife barefoot. Why? So our fucking shoes match. But let's talk about that, that, that fertility issue. Isn't it interesting? Do you remember ever reading about feminism uh, fighting for the against fundamentalist Christians because fundamentalist Christians said that you're trying to subvert the will of God and... and, and uh, and you could be stopping the, you know, Jesus from being born again in this world and blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, female birth control was against God and, and they protested for the right to have birth control. Right? And I'd have been right there with them. Yeah, you know, have the right to birth control. Um, but when condoms were a thing, feminists actually protested with the Christian fundamentalists and the reason why men should not be allowed to have condoms is because men might cheat and get away with it. Yeah, you can look that up. That really fucking happened. So yeah, feminism has always been against men and boys. It's always been about power. And not just and then not power for women, but power for the right women. Um, so yeah, now you might have a completely different view, and that's perfectly fine. I will talk about these issues with you all day long, and I will do so intellectually. Now, your last question was, let's have a logical conversation about this. Um, why would... Why would feminism, if it's a movement for women, like, let's go on that, why would feminism um, ever advocate for men and boys? And again, because women do not live in a bubble. We live together. What affects one of us affects both of us. Sometimes negative correlation, sometimes positive correlation. But if men and boys are constantly and always hurting, society is going to hurt. If you remove all women off the planet, right, just completely out of civilization, it would devastate humanity, right? Because we need the female aspect. We need the yin to our yang. We need that, right? We love our mothers. We love our daughters. Dude, I was in the, I was in the store just the other day, and I hear these two black men talking, and they go, they go, Man, our daughters, they know how to pull on our hearts. He goes, oh yeah, man, they do. Somehow they just know how to pull on our hearts. And I'm just sitting there laughing because, you know, again, 
This whole idea that patriarchy is against women and it, it holds them down. Men have always had a special place for their daughters. Women have always had a special place in their hearts for their sons. I mean, you can look up the Oedipus complex all you want, but at the end of the day, like for some reason, the opposite sex offspring to parent, like there's this weird bond. You, 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 the, the, the bond you have with your mother is completely different than you're going to have with your father. And for some odd reason, it's usually, at the younger age, stronger with the mother. Where daughters are stronger with the father. It's... I don't think we'll ever understand that, the dynamic. Um, it's, it's a strange one. But if all men disappeared from the planet, the idea that we wouldn't have any wars anymore is complete bullshit. Because as I said before, women have been pretty violent. And I looked up earlier, um, you know, because we talked about, you know, m male leadership versus female leadership, right? I mean, you said power, but I'm, I'm still going off that you mean female leadership. First of all, that's an apex fallacy. The leadership we have now in office in America, because we're both Americans, is put there by women. Women are four times less likely to go to prison or jail for the same sentence a man is, right? For the, sorry, for the same crime a man is. Because we have more compassion for women. Just like um, defendants who wear glasses, they have something called the sympathy factor, right? People who wear glasses are less likely to see jail time than defendants that don't have glasses. Okay, and because women are less likely to go to prison, right, or because they're likely to get lower, lesser charges, right, than their male counterparts, you have more men who are in prison compared to women. And, you know, when you go into prison, a lot of the times you have a felony charge. If you have a felony charge, you can't vote. Women also have a higher birth rate than males. Or sorry, females have a higher birth rate than males. So there are actually more female voters, potentially, than there are male voters. So the men who are in office in America are in office because, one, they want to be. Two, they have this thick skin to run for office, and three, because women vote them in. You can talk about gerrymandering all you want. At the end of the day, in every demographic, you have more females than males who are voting. So, they control the voting. They control who goes in. Right? Women don't didn't vote for Sarah Palin. Women didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. Right? If you look at the vast majority of of of, of women versus men in the voting process, right? Hillary said, Vote for me because I have a vagina. I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what she said when she tried to claim that if you don't help a woman out, then you're a betrayer to your sex. I mean, I, I can find the exact quote for you if you'd like, but she essentially said, Vote for me, I have a vagina. And I almost didn't vote for her because of that and because of other things she said. Like when she said, Women are the primary victims of war. It's men who are hauled off against their will to fight, bleed, and die to protect women. This is a case of point. Again, I'm going to go to the media, and a true story, something that actually happened, was, um, was Hacksaw Ridge. I don't know if you saw that movie or not, but there's a scene where uh, he refuses to pick up a rifle, and his drill sergeant is talking to the rest of of the team and saying, you know, he he doesn't want to, he, he's too cowardly to go off and, and fight because he doesn't care enough about our mothers and our sisters.
Right. That's that. That was the kind of mentality. So, yeah. If you've seen where I'm going with this, I think at this point I've made this video, you know, too long. But you want to talk about logic? Okay, let's drop the apex fallacy, right? Let's 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 drop uh, a lot of the fallacies I see, you know, <coughs> feminist use over and over again is the apex fallacy, gross overgeneralization, and shit like that, right? Like in this vague terminology of of power. Power is a very complex thing, and like I said earlier, nothing is without power. Now, how much power, and kind of power, and, you know, resources to, to keep power, that's all going to vary from person to person, not from gender to gender. So... I mean, I guess I've made this video too long, as it already is. Apparently, it's over 27 minutes. I should probably be now about half an hour. So, if there's any part of the video, or if, if you want to focus more on anything that I've talked about, I'm very willing to do so. I'm very willing to keep an open and... And, um... Oh, now I can't find the word for it. Let's go with peaceful and calm and rational discussion. Here you go. It's too goddamn long. I'm going to have links in the down below. Um, enjoy, I guess? I, I, I don't know. It is, I guess at this point, this video is whatever the fuck it is. And I may have gone off on too many tangents, too many different ideas. You know, welcome to ADHD.